Welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman, and we're talking about how to get to know God intimately. So we've come at it from many directions in the months past, but now we're still talking about biblical faith, except we're specifically talking about the difference between faith, foolishness, and presumption. We talked about it yesterday. Faith simply means to trust God, and if you trust him, then you'll do what he tells you to do. Foolishness means to act unwisely, and presumption, of course, is the taking of something for granted. All right, so let's see if we can talk about some practical things <clears throat> and uh, concerning this so we can know the difference between all of them. Now, <clears throat> um, before I graduated from Bible school, I remember one morning my you know, Brother Hagin would get up and he'd say, now look, there's some things that you should remember and never forget. And one of them was, he said, that God is the creator of all things. And the devil, who is an angel, fallen angel, cannot create anything. So the devil cannot create anything. All the devil can do is lie. He'll pervert everything that God has said. So whatever God's word is, the devil takes God's word and perverts it. God's word says that by his stripes we're healed. The devil says, ah, it's not God's will to heal everybody. Well, it is God's will to heal everybody. But see, he perverts it. He lies. He deceives. The devil can't create anything. All he can do is pervert what God has created. He's perverted health, sickness, health rather, into sickness, prosperity into poverty, life to death. I mean, he perverts everything. That's all he can do. So his only weapon is lying or deception. And we're stupid enough to believe it if we don't know God's word. But you think that once you know God's word, then you wouldn't believe his lies. But see, it's a battle that we are engaged in every day because we're living in, right now, Satan is still the God of this world system. So we're in enemy territory. Our home is really heaven. So we're going to be confronted with opportunities to be deceived and act foolishly or take things for granted instead of really walking by faith. So never forget, the devil cannot create anything. All he can do is pervert what God's created. All right, so as we look at some of the goals then, or examples rather, of faith, foolishness, and presumption, our goal is to, have, to walk in absolute victory in every area of life. So, and we believe that all of us will continue to grow spiritually <laughs> and uh, do better in the future. All right. Now, the Galatians 5.16, well, I suppose we can read it. It says we're to, well, let me just go ahead and read it. All right, so we get to Galatians in chapter 5 and verse 16. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Now remember, the lusts of the flesh, that's sinful flesh, selfish flesh. So if we walk in the Spirit, we're walking unselfishly. We're more interested in meeting others' needs than ours. If we walk in the flesh, the flesh shall see to it, it's selfish, it's sinful, lustful desires are fulfilled. So there's the battle between the two. Now, as Christians... We can start out in the spirit and end up in the flesh if we don't check our heart. There's a real narrow line between walking in the spirit and walking in the flesh. You can start out walking in the spirit and slip over into the flesh and not even know it if you're not careful. So we need to check our hearts, check our hearts. Why are we doing what we're doing? All right, so just remember that. So don't be pushed into foolishness. Now, I had an opportunity, well, to be pushed into foolishness and probably even presumption. But anyway, I uh, graduated from Raymond 75, and then we pastored an existing church for a year. And then uh, started with 12 people, and then we ended up with 80-some, and 
the Lord spoke to my heart, you know, that we were to resign from the church. And so I ran past my wife. She said, that's not God. So I really felt relieved. <laughs> but about a couple weeks later, I still felt that we were to leave, but I didn't say anything to my wife. But then a couple weeks later, she starts talking about moving. I says, what in the world come over you? She says, well, I don't know, but I, th I think we're to leave. Well, I got, I, so, so here's where, still, still a baby Christian. This is 76. I got born again in 72. And then 74, we ended up in the Bible school. So I'm still stumbling around, but we've been taught to be led by the Spirit, to be led by that peace that's in your heart. The sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. And uh, in Romans 8 and 14. And so that's really important to know God's will. So then, we, I thought, well, I don't know. I figured there's got to be something in Idaho. So we packed up our car. And of course, at that time, let's see, we would have had, uh, we would have had uh, three children at that point. And so we got into this little car and pulling this little surge robe up two-wheel trailer behind us with everything. But we end up in Idaho, and it was just like, what are we doing here? It was just like, we don't belong here. You know, it felt dark. But then we went up into northern Montana, happened to know a person there. Got up there, and of course, we visited with this friend of ours for a little bit. But I'm just checking my heart, and I feel out of place. So we moved on. We ended up going all the way down to New Mexico. Another Rama grad there that I knew, a, a, a classmate of mine. And oh, we just basically said, hi, how are you doing? Just passing through. <laughs> we didn't feel me long there either. And uh, oof. so then we headed for Oklahoma. And of course, it's camp meeting, Brother Hagen's camp meeting. So this would have been in July, I suppose. And uh, just, just didn't know really what to do. And uh, so we got there, and it was good. It was good. So only we had enough money just to get back to Minnesota, gas money. So we headed back to Minnesota because figured, well, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll end up teaching at uh, in Minneapolis. We pastored in Wilmer, 100 miles west of Minneapolis. But then I thought, well, I'll, uh, I'll go to Minneapolis, and maybe I uh, used to teach at Alcoholics Victorious. That's a, uh, the Christian version of, of AA. And I would go there on Saturday nights whenever I was in town or in the state. And I thought, well, maybe they'll have a job. So we went in there, and of course, the children come with me. And they're picking up all the cookies and eating <laughs> while I'm talking to the secretary. And finally, I just, uh, I just uh, decided we better get on back to Wilmer. And that's where we left. Well, we knew Sonner got to the car when I hear her shouting and saying, uh, come back, you know, uh, somebody just called and they want to give you $50, so I'll give you the money. I believe it was 50 It was a, and, 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 and then you can, you know, uh, she'll pay me back. So we had money to get some gas to Wilmer, praise the Lord. We, we, were, we were running on the fumes in our gas tank. Well, we just had enough to cash a check for $3, I think it was, or $6 at the border of Minnesota just to get us some more gas, and that was the end of our money. So then when we got to Wilmer, 100 miles west, we got to the city limits, and I had peace. And I felt in my heart, God said, I've called you to travel and teach. And right away, I said, hey, you got to pastor 20 years first before you can travel and teach. And I kind of like fought it. Maybe this is not God, what have you. And finally, I got it settled. We were to travel and to teach. And uh, we did about 10,000 miles that summer and driving around all over the country. Now, if I'd have been more mature, I wouldn't have had to drive for 10,000 miles. I would have had that peace right there, but that's all part of growing. So it was a real, <laughs> put a lot of effort into that one for sure. <laughs> but you learn, you learn to know God's voice. So anyway, there we were, right where we left. Well, our time is up and um, uh, we'll see you next time. Until then, be blessed in Jesus' name, amen.